Hi, this is T with T Quilts, and I'm here to show you how to cut the AccuQuilt Studio Chisel multiple dies. seen anywhere that's showing you how to efficiently use this die so I thought that I would show you what I do I'm not saying that what I do is correct I'm just trying to give you something on the internet for showing you how to cut this die again this is for the AccuQuilt studio system and right here it says the die number again is 50250 and it's chisels multiples um, also if you decide to order any AccuQuilt products I would appreciate it if you look in the description box of any of my videos and click on my AccuQuilt link prior to making your purchase on their site you still get to utilize all of your discounts reward points any special sales just enter the site via my link and then I get a little credit so it keeps me making these videos so one thing I do when I get a die is that I mark one quarter inch from the die lines and on this one it is a two-tone die I have a lot of older dies that aren't two-toned so I just use like a metallic marker if this is dark in the background but I mark one quarter inch all the way around from the farthest cutting point and here I think I have it just a little bigger because I like to give myself a little extra room because of the way that I'm going to be cutting this die so I also mark on the die the width of fabric that I need to cut so most times when I'm cutting fabric to die cut I cut a width a fabric off of the yardage well a length shall I say a fabric off the yardage so if I have a half yard of fabric and I need a piece that's 15 inches wide then I will just cut a piece of fabric that's 15 inches wide when I then go to run my die through the die cut my salvage of that 15 inches facing my belly button so I feel like I get a better cut that way not necessary especially if you're cutting from scraps but that's what I do I've also gone ahead and starch with some best press which is what I had I have no particular brand of starch that's better at this point for this process and so any starch I do recommend you put a little bit of sizing in your fabric and I mark my die with if I wanted to cut this piece from edge to edge then I go ahead and mark that on my die here 15 by 11.5 now I am going to be marking some more numbers here and I'm going to just get a um, marker looks like I'm going to be using a thicker marker today <laughs> so let's say I only wanted to cut um, instead of 11 and a half we'll cut this this die from this way let's just do that first of all you need 15 inches of fabric but let's say that I only have enough fabric that I can cut three so then I would go through here and say that I can probably cut three six nine I like to give myself so nine and a half is the minimum so no these are cut this part here three units instead of cutting all four so these are three and a half three and a half three and a half finished so this three and a half and this three and a half would be seven 
plus another three and a half would be ten and a half. I like to give myself an extra inch because when I go to cut the other side, I'm going to need that little extra room. So I'm going to mark on here 15, no, 11.5 inches, I'm sorry. And then let's say that I just wanted to cut these two. Again, these two together is 7 inches. Normally a half inch will work. That's good. So you could do 7.5 or 8. So I'm just going to put 8 inches here. I like to overcut, especially when I'm cutting like 10 layers. Then I need to make sure that I'm not just trying to save a half inch of fabric. And then you look up and four or five of your pieces are not under the die blade. I'd rather be safe than sorry. And then here, for something that's going to be just... But here, it's three inch finish, so I could cut this from a four inch strip, but again, just to be safe, let's just say four and a quarter inches, since I'm only cutting one and not multiples. But i rather have them bigger than not at all. So, this piece here would be cut 15, this piece here for three would be 11.5. Two of them, I would cut a strip eight inches, and then for just this one, I would cut a strip four and a half. Okay, so this is important because every time I'm doing this 15, it's because I want the total length of this fabric. When we cut this part, we're going to be cutting two pieces out of whatever rectangle that we have here. And for this side, this is where the 11 and a half comes in. So if I want to cut two, 11.5 inches cuts two. Okay, so this is how many I'm going to cut as to how many I need here. Because this would be seven, this would be seven, this is 14, so I would need 15 if I'm going to cut the entire thing. But for the width, of, of how long I need it here to cut two, then I'm going to need 11.5 inches and I'm going to cut two. And I'm going to show you how I actually cut two. So I'm just going to slide this down so you can sort of kind of see these numbers still. You can't see the 15, so let me push you up. Okay, so you can see all the numbers now. So I have already gone and done some pre-cutting, so I didn't have to be cutting in front of you. So I have a strip set that I cut 15 inches wide. So this here is 15 inches wide. And then I went back and cut it. 11 and a half inches wide now here I only have four fabrics here and what I'm going to do because on the studio die you can cut 10 layers I'm just going to go ahead and layer two of these together so that I can cut eight layers at a time I'm not so and then what I do is I line this up with my marks on my board here. I'm going to line this up right here. And you can see on my die that my pieces are hanging over. And that's okay because once we make this cut, we're going to take this, flip it around, and then we're going to cut the other side. One other thing prior to cutting, which is really important with chisels, if you only want your chisels going in one direction, you need to put all of your fabrics right side up. If you want chisels in both directions, depending upon your pattern, you can just fan fold your uh, fabrics or cut. Once you cut them that way, then you can just leave them, flip half of them one way so that you can get this cut, flip the other one the other way, and you get the reverse cut. So just keep that in mind. For this particular project, I need all of my chisels facing right side up. So I'm going to go die cut this, and then I'm going to bring everything back here. 
so I have brought everything back I just ran this through on my tray I brought the whole thing so you could see how it's in my tray and I'm just going to I've already did like a slight rub and then I take off my mat so what I want to do is take these cuts off I prefer to go ahead and take my cuts off the die so that I'm not disturbing my frame too much so I'm just going to set them over there and then I am also going to just stack them so that I know that they're set these are actually sets of twos because I stacked two but at least I know to look per that set when I go to sort these out okay so I just put them over here and I just stacked them so that I knew each stack okay so now what we want to do we've got this funny looking thing here with all of these ends hanging off when I put this in the tray you saw where it was hanging off of my cutting die but the tray held it in position so I didn't have to worry about that and then notice here that the label which I don't think you can see but hopefully you can the label right here was at my belly button so I'm actually cutting I cut a 15 inch wide strip so I've got lengthwise of grain going into the die first so then I take this whole thing pick it up rotate around and then I put it back into the die on you know using my marks on my mat sometimes they'll get just a little bit distorted and so I just pick them up put them back on the die making sure that I have everything covered and this is why I leave an extra half inch up under here we have got this unit already cut and it's very close if I had just used a half inch then I may not have been able to cut through all of these layers it's going to be a little bit more picky for me or I need to cut this longer so instead of 11 and a half maybe you need to cut it at 12 if you don't you know give yourself some extra space um, yeah so I just prefer to give myself some extra space um, I'm going to go back and run this through, and then I'll show you what's happening after that. All right. So I am back with my pieces cut again. Now this time, since I'm not going to be using this anymore, I wanted you to see how this stuff just, you know, makes a mess. And if you want to cut from the other side, there's a high probability you're not going to be lined up. So this is why I like to take my first pieces off the die without moving the outsides and then I can come back in and cut the second side and not have to worry about that. So since I already got um, this stack here, I'll just put it here so you can see it. I'm just putting them so that I know that I'm cutting my pieces and that those are sets. So whether it's set of two, set of one, I know it's some kind of a set when I'm getting into sorting. All right, so I just wanted to show you, but I'm not gonna do it on camera. If I wanted to cut, say, three pieces of fabric, then I would just lay my pieces on here so that I'm covering this corner and you can see where my three pieces I'm over that line that's why I like to leave myself an extra inch so that I am not worried about what's happening underneath and then I would go cut this rotate it around and do the same thing of course you can also do this with singles where this just happened to be the size of this scrap that was left so it's not the size that I needed just make sure that you go over that board by at least a quarter of an inch I can go run this through the die I can cut just singles rotate it around and then cut the other end and 
that's it. If you got any questions, if I miss something, if you've got better techniques for how to use this, I would really appreciate it. I am, as you say, uh, I saw that there was nothing here on the internet for it, and I have been using this dye. A chisels is one of my favorite shapes, and I've been using it and doing this technique for a long time. So I just wanted to share it with you guys. So if you got any questions, leave them in the comment section down below also again if you are purchasing any AccuQuilt supplies please look for my link down in the description box below if you're not subscribed to my channel please subscribe to my channel if you have suggestions for other videos you can also leave those down in the description box so that's gonna be it I will see you guys later thanks for watching Thank you all so much for watching. Please remember to like, comment, and subscribe. Share my channel with your other quilting friends, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye-bye, T-Quilters. Stay blessed.